I came to Shiloh 2020 trusting God for a male child because we had a, a baby girl and it was a burden also because there was no male grandchild in my husband's family so we all wanted a male child. During the January fast that was only the request I made also so I wrote it down as Papa always says good you write them down. I don't really know when the pregnancy happened when I took him. Eventually, when I got to know I was pregnant, I started having a series of attacks. I didn't know the sex of the baby. I was scared to check. But one day, a friend of mine called me and said he was praying. And then God revealed to him that he should pray for me, that I should pray for my son. That was what he told me, that the prophecy said I should pray for my son. And I was wondering, where is the son? <laughs> so he told me to do some things. So I just told him immediately, like said, Samuel, see, the church I attend, we are faith-based church. I don't believe in those kind of ritual rituals, you know. So I, I, I believe that God gave me this day because that was what I asked God for. So I went to the clinic as usual for my antenatal. But on that date, I actually went for a scan to know the sex of my baby. And I was told I was having a baby boy. But the expected date of delivery was not certain, so not clear. So one of the days I was leaving um, the clinic and I had um, a serious accident. My head, I had a deep cut on my head and they had to stitch my head. So they gave me drugs because at that point, the cut is so deep that they, 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 they stitched my head up. I was supposed to take antibiotics for the healing of that um, um, you know, injury. But I just told God and they were skeptical because the antibiotics they're going to give me was going to affect the baby. But also it was for my own safety. So it was more like 50-50, take it, um, something might, have, might go wrong, might affect your baby, it might not affect the baby. So they told me I should shake, uh, take my chances. I told God I was not going to take the antibiotics. I left it and I didn't take it. And miraculously, my head, my head got healed. From the beginning of the pregnancy, I was told due to health reasons, that um, I have pelvic bone, so I was not going to have my child through a vaginal delivery, so it was going to be through surgery. But the day I was to be operated, the doctor told me to go, that he was tired, I should go home and come back the following Friday. And for some reason, I was explaining to him I was still in, I was already in labor, but I didn't know because I've never experienced it before. It was strange to me. When I had my daughter, it was true CS2, but they didn't allow me going to labor. So I went home, but not knowing that my baby was dying, he was already drinking the minority fluid inside me. So on Saturday, the pain persisted. And I told God, if you can just keep me till Sunday, I promise I'll go to church. So I went to church on Sunday and it was a mantle service. So when the mantle got to me, I placed the mantle on my tongue. You know, Papa always say touch just your head and maybe your body. So I touched my head and I placed it on my tummy and I passed it on. So that, Papa said that we're going to have an encounter, that we should pray for God's visitation. So I prayed before I went to bed that I told God, please visit me. As I slept, I had a dream where I saw Papa. I was in the theater and he was like the guy operating me. And he brought out a full cap like a um, structure that had worms filled both front and the back was filled with worms. And in the, the sight of the worm, you can't withstand it. It was, there was no space, as if they were struggling, the worms were on each other. So on Monday, I went to the clinic to go and complain to them how I was feeling that. I've been feeling this since on Friday. So on getting there, I met the female among them just came to me. And as soon as she placed her hand on my navel, she just said, emergency CS, emergency CS. And then she said, the fetal heart rate is dropping, the fetal heart rate is dropping. And so I told her, please explain. She said, no time to explain to me anything. And they took me, they told them to prepare me for the theater. So they operated me. My baby did not cry. They said he had taken so much water, so he could not cry. They had to start uh, doing their, their, their medical things to resuscitate him. So they are bringing out fluid from his mouth, and his nose. So they kept doing that for like 30 minutes. Nothing was happening. My baby still was not crying. 
I just reminded God, I said, you have taken, you have done, carried out a surgery on me, spiritually, and the spiritual rules the physical. I will not carry a dead baby out of this place. I will not live here without my baby. Please, God, answer me. Just then, my baby cried. With all the trials, all the um, things that the enemy threw at me, the devil tried to take my life and that of my baby. I survived two accidents in the course of this pregnancy. And God, in his miraculous way, he sustained me all through the pregnancy. And today, I have my testimony with me.